now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hi, this is Alex. This is the Ramble, just like it says right there. And we'll be here until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, this man here is a brave human being who is getting on an airplane to go. What? You're going to get on an airplane. Yes. I said yes, you're I brave. Am. I said you're brave to get on the airplane. That's Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. As Thank like, you. Thank you very much. So you can't tell because we got his name up on the screen. He is going to Massachusetts. <laughs> he is forever forsaking the left coast of the United States of America. Yep. You've lived on the left. Survived. You've lived on the left how long? Since eighty one. Jesus. Eighty one. Hmm. Right. So I must have first met you in like 82, right? Somewhere around there, sure. Yeah. God, that's how many years? What, 36, 37? Oh, Jesus Christ. Am I that old? If you're that old, then I'm this old. Yeah, you're this many. Yeah, right. Oh, right. man. Oh, man. How the years fly, you know? I was just thinking yesterday. I mean, it's just like... Everything's gone by so fast. Yes. You know, uh, before you know it, you've you've pretty well done it. You know, you're done with it. Uh, oh sure. Yeah. I mean. I mean, uh, I I, I want to go back to doing stand up mm -hmm. when it's allowed. When it's allowed. Yeah. There's a couple of clubs even in Worcester. Oh really? That are are they open? No. No. So they might be out of business before they can open. Oh, well, there are going to be a lot of places out of business before this is over. Oh, yeah. You know? uh, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, we're going to have a whole new ways of doing everything. I mean, I, I, I talk about people adapting. The best adaptation I've seen is a show, I don't know if you ever watch it, called America's Got Talent. You sure, I've seen it. Yeah. And it depends on uh, having four judges and people on a stage doing their acts and then an audience reacting to all of this. Well, they went a couple of weeks without the audience. Right. How'd you like to do stand-up to an empty house? Yeah. Uh, well, they had stand-ups getting up doing stand-up to, to nobody. I mean, I, I, I had to give them credit for doing it, although they weren't very good comics. But I had right. to give them credit for doing it because, you know, could you do that? I'd have to play to the crew. You'd have to play to the crew. Right. That's what I'd have to do. Or the four judges who are judging you. Right, 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 right. Well, I wondered, how are they going to continue with this show? Because then they go into their live shows, and they go into their, you know, semifinals and so on. What they did in the meantime, while Corona was taking place, they redid the physicality of the show, and they moved into a soundstage at Universal. Right. And they put up these giant LED screens with people zooming in to be the audience. And it works because exactly. they all applaud and they all cheer and you can hear them going gasping when something happens. And the, when you see the the, uh, the judges in back of them are all these people. It really works. So I, I've, I've loved the ingenuity of how people have adapted to this. Right. I mean, now dining in Manhattan is all outdoor. But what they did was they allowed them to take up parking spaces and build up outside areas for eating. Right. And so it's really kind of gotten nice. I, I don't know if that isn't going to remain for a long time to come because it works, you know. Right. At least a year. But I love the inventiveness people have had with all of this. I mean, uh, I've been watching the, uh, well, by the time you and I, this goes on, it'll already be over, but I was watching the, uh, the Democratic National Convention virtually. Really? Uh, you know, where they had all the people, they did a show every night from like 7 until 11, 
or 8 until 11 or whatever. And they had all the people giving their speeches from their homes. Okay. And they put it together in this very nice production. And I looked at Marjorie and I went, you know, this is almost better than watching the actual convention. Sure. Because they had to be more creative. They had to be more creative. They were doing more of a show. The speeches were m w better thought out. There was no audience right. for them, so they were having to, you know, it. it but it worked. That was the, the interesting part about it is it worked. I'm sure. And um, uh, I'm wondering if future conventions might not just always be that way because sure. it works so well. Now we're going to have to wait and see what the Republicans do because, and, uh, because the Republicans weren't prepared for this. Up until no, the, the last couple of, about the last month, they were planning and still holding it in like Charlotte or someplace like that. I don't right. know where. Charleston. Right. I can't remember what the city was. They had, we're going to go to Florida, but that didn't pan out very well. No, uh, did it. Yeah. So uh, they're going to do it virtually too, but they're not ready for it. No. So the president's trying to think of, where am I going to give my speech? And he's thinking of using the White House, but he can't do that because the White House is. You're not allowed to do political events in the White House. Right. It's neutral. The it's, White House should be neutral. Yeah, yeah. So the president is now thinking of doing it at Gettysburg. Oh, God. Why? Because it's going to be the, the second Gettysburg address? <laughs> you know? Uh, if we can keep Trump down a, you know, a one page of, uh, of a speech, that'd be great. Well, Trump never heard of the uh, Gettysburg Address. He thought it was 502 Main Street. You know, thank you. So thank you very much for my joke. But anyway, uh, so, I mean, uh, and, and, oh, the other thing he wanted, he got a hold of the, uh, I think it's South Dakota, is it? He got a hold of the governor there and asked how he could get his face put on Mount Rushmore. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. He also opened up... Uh, oil digging in the Alaska Preservative. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, he, fuck this yeah. polar bears. Let's just drill. Oh, and he was uh, assailing Joe Biden for, he'll stop fracking. Yeah. No crap. I mean, fracking makes, makes the land collapse. That's right. You know? I mean, Jesus. I, oh, I, you know, I'd like this to be a Trump-free zone here today. I agree. Because I'm so tired of him. I'm so tired of talking about him, of hearing from him. I wish he would just shut the fuck up. You know. Right. And there I go again. Right. Can't stop. So <laughs> anyway, is there? what are you looking forward to most in going back to Massachusetts? Oh, seeing my family. Yeah, yeah. Seeing friends that I've known for, you know, over 40 years. Wow. And, and it, there's this woman that I want to kind of, I'm kind of, uh, oh, I want to start dating. Oh, do we, oh, oh, do we, oh, is that, is that the real reason you're moving out there? The real reason I'm moving out there is there's nothing happening here. Okay, well, that's given. Right. Okay. So if, if nothing's happening, I, you know, I'm, I'm going back for the fall, which will be nice. Mm -hmm. The winter, which will be brutal the first year. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the change of seasons, friends, family, they're all good reasons to go back. But the woman? The woman I was smitten with in high school. Really? And I st I've stayed in contact with it all these years, and now we're getting closer and closer. Maybe I could take it, start dating her. Wow. I've well, never that, dated her. It, that's a nice story. It is. Yeah. Uh, however, it could be a di it, could, it could be disastrous. Right. I've had it those. Could, hmm? It could wreck our friendship. Yeah. Well. Does it have to wreck it? Or could you just say, no. hey, it doesn't work this way. We're better as friends. You know? Right, 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 right. 
You know, I, I, I take great pride in the fact that most of my ex-girlfriends are friends still. Right. You know, I still talk to my ex-wife, one of my ex-wives. I talk to both my ex-wives. Don't talk to the third one because I don't know where the hell she is or if she's even still alive. Right, uh, right, right. But, and, and my ex-girlfriends, I still talk to them. I still get notes from them and so on. I don't think oh, I too. ever really, any woman that I went with on any regular basis, I ever alienated when we broke up. Right, you know, right, there might right. have been a short time where she didn't want to talk to me or she felt hurt or, or I felt hurt or something like that. But then after that, we worked through that and we became friends. Right. My first ex-wife was, uh, last time I saw her, she was drinking again. So I don't know if she's alive or not. Uh -huh. And my second ex-wife, I've talked to her pretty much monthly, won't call each other and chat. Yeah. You say the first one was drinking again. Was she drinking when you married her? No. No. No, she was sober. Uh-huh. And uh, had she been a drinker and then yes. decided to be sober? Yes, yes. But you weren't sober. No, I wasn't. So how did that work out? Well, I guess it didn't work out. Right, there you go. Yeah. So you... No, my, huh? What? I was, I was heavily into using while I was with her. How can someone who's quit, and obviously, did she go through some kind of program like uh, AA or whatever? Yeah, she went to AA. Then how could she link up with somebody who would be a danger to her sobriety? You know, when I met her, I was clean and sober, and oh. then I relapsed. I see. Okay. All right. So now, when I relapsed, it went to hell. Okay, so that's what brought the marriage to an end, was you relapsed. That's correct. Okay. Your second marriage, why did that end? Was, was it drugs too? No. I was uh, clean and sober for over five years when she asked for a divorce. Oh, really? Yeah. What did that do? Make you go back to drinking? No, no, no. <laughs> no, we, we were together up in uh, Carson City, Nevada. Really? How long ago was that? That wasn't that long ago then. No, I left there in 2011. Oh, okay. All right. And how long was that marriage? Probably around 10 years. Really? Oh, yeah. See, I mean, I lost a lot of track of you over the years. In fact, a right. lot of people lost track of you. Right, right, you know, right. Because, because when you disappeared, you just disappeared. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I'm very private, even though what I do is very public, but my regular life is very private. Yeah, but I, I you know, I, I, I love these things we're doing now, and you look well, and you look happy, and you look grounded. And, oh, yeah. And probably internally you're still a mess, but you deal with that from day to day, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. My life revolves around... You were always the guy that we always said, like, people would say... I wonder where Steve Kravitz is. Or uh, I heard from Steve Kravitz, and I go, how is he? And we all cared about you. Yes. Because we knew your, 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 your vulnerability. Right. And we were worried about that vulnerability. And right. we didn't want it to be the reason for losing you. Right, right, and, exactly. Uh, and so a lot of people cared about you, you know, even though they didn't know where you were or where you were going <laughs> or whatever. But, right, right, right. You know. It wasn't until I got my mental health straightened up that I was able to put down, you know, the drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Because I was using the drugs and alcohol as a way to medicate myself so I didn't go bonkers. Right, right. Like, I, I, you know, if I write a book, I'm going to have one, one title, uh, one chapter will be Heroin Saved My Life. Heroin Saved Your Life? How's that? Because it kept me from getting so depressed that I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> okay. Well, because I'm bipolar. I, un I understand. I understand. But you yeah. really have to deal with the bipolar thing rather than the drug thing. That's right. And once the bipolar thing was put in check, I was able to say, uh, you know, I'm clean and sober 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't until I got my mental health right that I was able to... Uh, Put the 15 years together. Right. Oh, well. Oh, boy. 
Well, I'm glad it's you done. got it together, and I, I, you know, I wish you bon voyage and a good trip <laughs> back to Massachusetts. And when you get there, uh, get in touch with me, and we'll do some more of these from a different location. That'd be cool. Because you, you're taking your computer with you, right? Of course. Of course. That goes the, the computer and my medication goes on the plane with me. <laughs> hey. Thank you for being with us all these weeks, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Okay, Alex. Ladies Thanks and gentlemen, for having me. That's Steve Kravitz. He's going to Massachusetts, and the next time we talk to him, he'll be in Massachusetts. Bye, Stephen. Bye, Alex. Bye, folks. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, and that's Steve Kravitz. And uh, oh, I got to do this. I, forget, see, I always forget to do something these days. I had to turn on the lights so that I look good. See? Yeah, there. I look much better. Uh, I hope the lights look good tonight uh, because I'm using, I'm brightened them up a little bit. You know, I brighten them up a little bit. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, we, uh, we are going to assemble now what we call a citizen panel. And it is a group of people who get together and they all talk about uh, things that are going on. Uh, you know, sometimes we talk about nothing in particular and other times we talk about all kinds of things in particular. Let me turn up the fan here on this uh, air conditioner because I am it's starting to get a little toasty in here. There we go. I did that and uh, we should be ready to go. Anyway, we have one person waiting to be online with us, so uh, let's let him, let's admit him into the, uh, I just pushed the button there, that didn't do anything, there we go, here comes Charlie Wallace, ladies and gentlemen, this may be the only citizen panel tonight, for all we know, hi there Charlie, how are you, oh wait a minute, already here comes Robert Natali, and here comes Jeff Stein, so, uh, well, now we got to force him, hello everybody, how are you? Hey. Yeah. Hey. Um, let me see here. What do I need to do? I'm just trying to get all my levels right. Anyway, it looks like we're going out okay tonight. Uh, second night working with this new YouTube thing. You know what I'm thinking of doing with YouTube? I'm thinking of uh, ending the uh, commercials that you see at the beginning. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, every, every, every so often, they say to me, you, we can't monetize your show because it's not acceptable to a large amount of advertisers, right? And what I do is they put up the live version on YouTube, okay. and then I also put up the recorded version that I do here on YouTube. They are both absolutely identical. The only difference being that the, the one that goes live on the air has all those promos in the beginning. Uh, and um, uh, both of them are identical. And like uh, two days ago with the show with, uh, with I ran with Will Durst, they said cannot be monetized because of, and I then pro protest and they said the protest hold, the protest doesn't uh, work. Uh, the the uh, non-monetization stands and that's it. Meanwhile, right next to it is the other show that I ran which is a recording of the same show, and they say, oh, that's okay to monetize. Mm. I'm, and I, this happens constantly. Every night I have to click something that says, I, I, I protested, I protested, I protested. On the live version, but on the recorded version, I never have to do that. So my question is, why am I wasting my time for like in the last six months, I think I made $100 off the monetization, you know? And what does it do? It means two things. Number one, you have to put up with those fucking ads at the beginning of the show. And they make money. So why don't I deprive them of money and just not monetize it? You know? So that's, that's my gripe for tonight. Anyway, how you, how you doing, uh, Charlie? How's everything in Texas tonight? Oh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm having a pretty good day. You had a pretty good day? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, how's the, uh, how's the uh, corona doing there? Well, according to them, we only had uh, 2,000 new cases today. Only which would be lower than it was back in March. Only 2,000 new cases? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. after almost 7,000 yesterday. So well, I don't know. Well, you know what it I is. Believe- the, wow. prob- the problem is that goddamn testing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If they didn't yeah. test, you wouldn't have all those cases of corona. You just have dead people. You just have dead people. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You know, and if I if I don't go to the dentist and take X-rays, I won't get cavities. That's right. You know, you're a cancer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I I can't right. I can't figure any of that out. Okay, all right. So how many people in Texas can die each day? Each day, John. Well, as well, many- we had been averaging about two two hundred and fifty a day, but we only had twenty six today, according to. Oh, that's good. That's what an good. improvement. Well, we've also improved the therapies too. You know, uh, we we we're not doing it exactly in the way we were doing it at the beginning of this. I would not have wanted to be somebody with COVID at the beginning of this pandemic, because you'd be a, a shit's creek medically. You know. Um, and how are you doing up there, Jeff? Everything okay? How, the storm tonight? Uh, your mic isn't on. Your mic. You need to put your mic on. I put it off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, it was uh, pretty wild uh, rain and blowing, and and everything was dry around mm-hmm. here. You still got electricity? Yeah, oh, we okay. did, but our friends lost it. Oh, they lost it? Oh. Yeah, but oh, they Pam just said they got it now. My our governor here uh, complained today, saying, uh, "Now we're supposed to have storms tonight, and I don't want to hear from Con Ed." that uh, they couldn't handle the storms because that's what they're in business to do is to handle storms, you know? They, they should be ready for that sort of thing. It's not like a storm comes and you're surprised that uh, you're losing stuff, you know? Uh, you're losing uh, uh, lines and so on and so forth. Everybody's coming on tonight a little slowly. I guess they're all just entranced by Donald Trump tonight. <laughs> Ugh. Um, I, you know, how much can you lie and distort the truth? That's what I don't understand. Well, he has like 20 people who are willing to lie for him. Yeah, but I mean, but I mean, it's the complete distortion of truth that's going on there. I mean, you know, I, somebody once told me that you can do a lot of things in life, but the one thing you can't do is shine shit. <laughs> But somehow, these people seem to be able to do it, okay? You know, yeah. they're out there just... They wha- just say it shines. Huh? They just say it shines. They don't bother yeah. to shine it. They just say it shines. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, Kim Kardashian got a, uh, a pardon for this woman, the Trump pardon. She spoke tonight. And how wonderful Donald Trump was. Yeah. You know, does he have to pardon you in order for you to say something nice about him? You know, I suppose, uh, you know, I mean, I, hey, look, she has every right to uh, to think nicely about the guy. I mean, he did pardon her after all, you know. But uh, I just I, what's bothering me and I, I'm sure it bothers you is number one, they're using Washington, D.C. and the monuments and everything else as a, as a prop for their convention. Secondly, the use of the White House. Uh, what do we have? What's that law? The uh, Hatch Act. Hatch Act. That says you can't use the, the, the White House or any government building, for that matter, uh, for political purposes. And here they are, they're out on the, you know, he's on the back steps of the White House, uh, and they got all these people crammed in without masks. I know. I hope they all come down with corona. I just hope there's this massive infection that goes on out there. <laughs> you know, I, and I don't wish this on anybody, okay? okay? But in this case, they're being so stupid that I'm going to do that, you know? Well, it, it, it struck me last night watching highlights if you want to call it that, mm-hmm. um, it, it struck me that they were spending all night talking about how wonderful things are going mm-hmm. while conducting a virtual convention. You know, <laughs> already right there is the biggest goddamn oxymoron you could ever imagine. You know, well, why is it you can't be together then? You know, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why are you getting all these people together and then you don't 
have the guts to go somewhere and hold it, you know. Uh, I did you hear them talking about about coronavirus that much in this whole thing at all? Uh, were they talking about it at all? Did they bring it up? He's lying about it, about how it's, uh, you know, how, how he's been so great, of, and and you know, just he handled it. He's I mean, doing he, that he now. Speaking about the pa- the the pandemic in the past tense. Yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah. already over. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's over. Al- it's already over. I see. Okay. Cudlow yeah. says it in the past. And the economy is booming. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, the, the, the economy, let me, let me explain why the stocks have gone up, okay? Um, stocks, people don't buy stocks based on right now, okay? They panic right now initially, but then they don't buy based on right now. They base, they buy on what they figure is the future. And so they're, they're buying based on that future. They're not buying on the fact that things are better right now uh, because things aren't. I mean, how do you have... How many people are out of work now? 30 million? Yeah, at least, How do yeah. you have 30 million people out of work and that's a good economy? And I don't care what the stocks are. That's a bunch of gamblers buying stuff. Yeah, right. You know. And you know something? Mm-hmm. It's only about 10 stocks that are booming that are driving up all the averages. Yeah. Because they're so big now. You know, the he biggest stocks to the are Dow. Apple, Facebook, Google, Amazon. Yeah. And when those stocks go up, they drive the, the fucking... Uh, yeah. Average is up. Well, I'm glad I didn't sell anything, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, uh, still, I mean, I own stock. Not everybody. How many people own stocks? You know? Yeah, I, no longer. I, no, I you, blew no. it. I sold Salesforce last year, and I and I, I have it on my spreadsheet, and I always put in what the price is now mm-hmm. to see how much I would have made if I didn't sell. <laughs> oh, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I would have made like 25000 bucks, but mm-hmm. I, I made 3000 Mm-hmm. But if I'd have held it, I'd have made twenty five thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh, well. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I own stocks because I had to have somewhere to put my money. You know, I'm not going to let it. I I had a I I put about I had what, what was it? I had about twenty thousand uh, dollars in no I had no I had about forty five thousand dollars at Bank of America in the savings plan there, and I got one of their their. Um, uh, Ones that's you know, get you more money for your money or for your taxes, yeah. or for like your, a market fund. Uh, yeah, but yeah, well, you know, it, yeah, and, and it, so it was attached to that, and I get my thing one day, and I it was forty five thousand dollars sitting in the account, and they say, and interest is you get an is five dollars and seventy cents, <laughs> and I'm going. There's got to be a better place to put my money. You know, than that. I mean, the nerve of it. The, yeah, the bank is like a mattress now, I think. It's yeah, like it's it's so low. Well. Yeah, yeah, vice but, versa. But I mean, you get nothing back from the bank at all. I don't care what they say. So why should I leave a ton of money in there for any reason? You know, um, I, uh, but I, it, 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 it was amazing to me, just amazing to me. And so, I, I, I then we went and got me vanguards and things mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, I've got a prudential through Sirius XM with the uh, stuff they gave me as, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I didn't do a 401k or anything like that. They just gave, no, it, to me. Right. They just gave it to me. It was a bonus. Uh, and, uh, and I, you know, I saw those things go down where I lost about 15 grand, but I'm back up. You know, I'm back up to where I was now. You know, I don't care. It's just, it's. I decided it's all money. And that's all it is. You know, it isn't happiness. And it isn't, uh, you know, whatever. It's, yeah, ter- it's sad. It's really sad. But anyway. <sighs> uh, our lines are open, by the way. If anybody more wants to call, we can, we can take up to 20 people here without even breathing heavy. So give a call because it looks like... Uh, uh, the coast is clear to be able to speak on this show tonight. Um, let me see here. Uh, what's your takeaway, Robert, of what you're seeing tonight? I mean, I was bothered by the use of the White House. I was bothered by the use of national monuments and their ads and things like that. 
I'm bothered by all those same things you mentioned. And something else really struck me was the woman who received the uh, pardon. It struck me that here's a woman who was guilty and is being pardoned. In the meantime, the Central Park Five were found innocent, and yet he still yeah. proclaims them guilty. So I'm not sure I understand the well, calculus uh, here. Let, let's go a little further with that calculus. Let's say this weren't Donald Trump who had pardoned this woman, okay? Um, don't you think that if it were a Republican going after, say, Obama for doing it, they would oh. say he was pardoning criminals while he was in office. Shitstorm. This was a woman who was a drug dealer, you know? Uh, he's pardoning drug dealers. He's putting drug dealers back out on the street oh, yeah. so they can wreak their havoc again. Now, quite frankly, I think the woman should have gotten a pardon. I think that the sentences for that sort of thing were too draconian. But nevertheless, it's kind of sad, you know. Um, yeah, remember, hmm? remember when uh, when Obama pardoned all those people at the end of his term? Yeah. He pardoned like about, what, about, was it like 100 or 200? Uh, yeah, that's a common you know, thing you do at the end. Low-level, you know, yeah. people that had like pot mm -hmm. sentences and stuff. And... Uh, I don't remember. Did, did the Republicans jump all over him for oh, that? I think oh, yeah. they did. Oh, yeah, yes. they did. Yeah. 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 And, and yet you have a woman who was a convicted drug dealer, if I remember yeah. correctly, and uh, she should have been out years ago. I'm not saying she should be in there. But nevertheless, a convicted drug dealer getting up and proclaiming her love for Donald Trump. I just don't know if that fits with Donald Trump's law and order mandates, you know. And then you had Pence last night supposedly doing a whole thing on law and order. Yeah. And you know what? Law and order. What? He just he just commuted uh, or pardoned pardoned uh, uh, Roger Stone, a guy who said I uh, uh, and who else? Oh yeah, a bunch of other people who admitted their guilt. Right. You know, I mean, come on. What's the law and order? There, that's not law and order. You been watching any of this, Tony? Yeah, I have. I have. I kind of find it entertaining. There was no social distancing going on. Even my mother says they're not even spaced apart. Everybody was jammed together. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, to me, I find it exciting. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I'm really, like, with the whole, you know, it's been getting me really, like, enthralled in the whole thing, how sports is getting involved now. And I was yeah. going to even tell you guys this. Today it ranked false for me sports when the Mets walked on the field, Alex, and they walked off. And I'll explain everybody to this too. If there were fans in those stands, you really think they would have walked off that field? Uh, it, it, explain to everybody what happened today. The Mets did a protest today. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw that. They I walked did, on yeah. the field. They stood for 42 seconds. And then they picked up and they just left. Yeah. And they didn't play the game. Now, which is fine, but let's just say if there were fans in the stadium. Oh, stands, if there were 10,000 people there, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't. I was just going to ask you, there's no way they would do that. To I me, mean, it's, it's, so it, 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 it's a time where they can have a certain uh, feel of, uh, uh, of, of solidarity when there's nothing at stake. Exactly. You know, um, <laughs> and the owners would say, now you get out on that fucking field, God damn yeah, it. You know? Alex, come on. Yeah. Alex, yeah. Here's a question I asked you, Alex. You ready? Mm -hmm. Say when you work in New York radio in the 70s, mm -hmm. would you be able to just not go to work that day? Say if it was a big day and it was political. Can you imagine if you told your boss, I just can't go on the air today? But listen, it's a big night. It's election night. I got to have you there. It's like you can't just walk off the job like that. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did it in San Francisco one day. Uh, you know what it was? I don't, I don't know what my mood was. Okay. But I'm doing a show and I'm interviewing somebody. I can't even remember who I was interviewing. And I said to myself, you know something? This is the last time I want to ever have to do this. You know, I just said, this guest is just bogus. And I've had too many of these in my lifetime. I'm through. I, and I just said, that's it. I'm through. And I got up and I left the studio. And my uh, newswoman took over the show and I got in the car and I went into upstate California and I disappeared. Nobody knew where I went. And I can't remember what did it. I think the closest thing that might give you an example of what it was, was Phil last night on this show. 
Right, so yeah, happy, that right? would have made me get up and walk out in the old days, okay. you know, because I, I just, you know, it was just, I heard it just one too many times, and I went, yeah, and that's what was happening that day when I was doing the radio show. It was just one too many times of hearing the same thing from the same people, and it wasn't any of my comedian friends. It was some guest they brought in, and I just said, this is a, just, who need, do I need to do this for a living? And then after about a day or so, when I looked at my paycheck, I said, maybe I better go back, you know. So uh, that was the uh, height of my, uh, you know, what would you call you know, it? You know what I was, oh, no, Mom, I'm, uh, I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, don't yeah, worry. Shut up, Mom. I mean, she's in the bathroom. Listen, if you know what I was going to ask you to? <laughs> she's. Forget it, Mom. I'm talking to someone. <laughs> She's in the bathroom. This is this is the, isn't this beautiful? Isn't this the wipe her, wipe her. Come on, Tony. Tell her to call in. Isn't this the best? Yes. Yeah. You know. Reality, at Tony. Yeah. Yeah. And Kirk's Kirk's light going out every twenty minutes. Yeah. Listen. What, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Right. Listen, it's on a timer. Uh, uh, it's on a motion thing. You know. I know, uh, John. Why don't you just plug the goddamn light into the wall? It is plugged into the wall, but it's got like a motion thing. I just bought it. I don't know. It comes with a motion thing, and I don't know how to turn it off. RTFM. <laughs> There's got to be a way to turn There's it no off. There is no manual. It didn't come with the manual. Oh. <laughs> but, and and you, you don't do a clap on, clap off bit here? Yeah, it's like that's what it is. Yeah. It's Really? Yeah. Well, I'm but, sure you can. But it comes you, with that. You want to see it? But no, I, send me the instruction manual. Uh, you know, uh, please. I've done enough I, I, IT work here at, at home. Um, yeah. It's a light. We've established that. Yeah, they yeah. have an internet thing that you can find out about. Yeah, why. there's got to be a way that you can you can not have have to. And it turns off after a certain amount of time, which means there's a timer on it that you should be able to, like, do away with. I know. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> Hello, Kevin. How are you? Hello, Brian. How are you? Y yeah? Good. I had to leave. I just kept hearing the same BS over and over, so. What? Yeah. What you uh, listen to listen to Trump until it got too much. So I started going into the whole China and everybody was against me to close the airlines and all that stuff. Yeah, and but he didn't close. America's going to burn. He didn't close yeah. the airlines coming in from Europe to New York. I Plus, know. forty thousand people came in after he fucking supposedly yeah. closed. No, down. including no, my no. son. Four. Oh, you're talking about forty thousand people from China. Yeah. In yeah. a time that he didn't close down the East Coast. Three million people came in here from Europe, and that's why we got so devastated by it. You know, so what have you? You know, so I'm. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, I mean, well, I. Uh, how do you feel about watching it, Brian? We were talking about this, and seeing him using the White House as a prop. Yeah, I thought, yeah, yeah, I, and I was. I know there's a bunch of protesters over there. But couldn't they, like, be over in that area, wherever he is, and, like, you know, air horns and stuff like that? That would have been hysterical. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I'm sure they were taking care of that. Yeah. yeah. Isn't, Tear gas. Isn't, uh, doesn't that thing face a gate that's on the street that people, you know, can, can look at? Uh, you know what I'm saying? That they can be on the outside protesting? Yeah, that's but okay. I, I think they got it all. The, the cops got it all cleared out, probably. Oh boy, what? Did probably a good idea. They weren't, they aren't close enough to get COVID. Did they have to do? Did they have to do tear gas again? I don't know. Yeah, uh, Bree's joining us. So you don't have a picture on you yet, Bree. No, oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, there's no Mr. Green Jeans today. He's not. Yeah. Out, he's not out working in his <laughs> yeah. garden today. He's not. He's not yeah. being the Mr. Green. By the way, I have to say something. Yeah. That picture, the, uh, there's one picture, several of them actually, of Donald Trump with a shit-eating grin on his face going. Yeah, he does that. Yeah, he goes like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a <laughs> pussy. Um, Jeez almighty. Makes me want to never do a thumbs up again. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, Ugly fucker. His face, I'm sick of looking at him. Well, you know, he, he gave an acceptance speech while the coast was being flooded, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's I'm amazing. It's amazing how he's being sympathetic to things when he wasn't being sympathetic to things when he wasn't rerunning for president, you know? All of a sudden, I, I, I will say this again, he's like the super in your building who, course, like, yeah. three months before, maybe two months before the uh, uh, Christmas bonus is due, decides to help you fix your apartment, you know, or come fix that faucet that's been leaking for a year and he never answered your call. Uh, Trump is this way. He suddenly doing all these things and saying, oh, and our love goes out to the people from the, from the hurricane and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, go down there and throw them some toilet paper, okay? You know? <laughs> did, you see how, did you see how he was leaning up against the podium, sort of? He sort of had that little, like, lean up there, you know, like sort of, you know, where you see all the other guys, you know, yeah. when you see the other presidents speak, they're very much, you know, really respect that. Yeah. He's, like, leaned over and sort of, yeah. Really he always does that. He always does that, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, the ratings are horrible, I heard, so far. Well, you know, I, I, I never saw so many stars and bars in one place in my life. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, how many flags were out there? Mm -hmm. How many streamers were red, white, and blue? You know, he was wearing a red, white, and blue tie. I mean, it's all what we call jingoistic. Yep. You know, and it's in service of nothing. Let's look at your record, okay? Let's look at what you've done while this country has been under your stewardship. And the answer is, not a goddamn thing. You know, I mean, he failed us on the coronavirus. He failed us on the, uh, the economy that followed after the coronavirus, which lost, uh, in which 30 million people are out of work right now. He likes to say, there are 13 million more people back to work now. Yeah, but there are 30 million people out of work. I mean, I can't think of anything he did that wasn't ruinous to this country. And, you know, it, it, we, we didn't expect the pandemic. But if he had a decent president, he would have attended to the situation, and he just didn't. He failed us. He failed us big time. And he's responsible yeah. for the death of 180,000 people. You know. Yeah, and I thought that's what, what was going to put him over the top when that started happening. And, geez, he just had to show half empathy, you know, for what was going on. And, geez, somebody should have slapped him and say, say this. And when he would say those stupid things, he would win everybody over. And then they, that would bring him another four years. Well, he thing. is so he he's so stupid that he didn't realize that that was a perfect opportunity to get reelected. Just, exactly. It just seemed from the get-go like you were doing something. You didn't even have to do anything. Just seem from the get-go like you cared and like you were doing something. You're making us dizzy, Bree, with the, yeah. Uh, uh, That's for checking the termites. Uh, and then I gotta get the other yeah. trap for new civets Yeah, but it's making, us, it's making us nauseous. Oh. You know, because the camera's going everywhere and so on and so forth, and it's kind of distracting. So, uh, you know. I'm bringing a little action to you. No, life. this is an action. It's it's quite frankly it's 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 kind of distracting. You know. So if you could find oh, but a But if I turn off my video for this stuff then you say where's your video? Well, just put the can put the iPad <laughs> down somewhere and go do whatever you're going to do, but don't do that moving the camera cuz it's making me nauseous. You know. Uh, it's MTV generation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 so say you, who's way outside the the uh, uh, area of a MTV generation. Uh, you know, in fact, what is MTV anymore? Um, anyway, where was I? So yeah, that, he just had to have somebody tell him what to say. Just be half half. Yeah, just you know, about yeah. it. Yeah. And he, he, he was too stupid to do that. What he's doing now, his, their whole modus operandi, was to go out. Caused strife in Portland, which they did. If the, if the troops had not gone in there, the whole thing would have quieted down. It probably wouldn't even really have existed any longer. But instead, he flared it up so that he could then point to that as anarchy in the streets of America. And their, their well, main thrust is fear. You know? Yeah. And fear to people who are hearing him go, 
You know, if you inv uh, let the Democrats in, you're going to have rioting in your streets. And yet, these well, people are living in towns where they will never see a riot in their lifetime. Yeah. You know? While the riots are going on. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, oh. it, the whole fear tactic thing is just absolutely disgusting. I, li I like the line, uh, the MS-13 is going to move in next door to you. Yes. I yes. mean, really? Yeah. 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 I don't think they can afford the prices, frankly. Well, if they do move in next door to you, it's going to be a lot safer neighborhood than it was before because they have the guns. Yeah. Uh, you know. They'll watch the neighborhood. If you yeah. believe in the guns. But, you know, I mean, painting, their whole painting of the Democrats as... Uh, Oh, 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 the best one was uh, Pence, I think, came out and said something to the extent that Joe Biden wasn't a true Catholic. Really? How dare he? Yeah. I mean, if, if any man was a Catholic, it's Joe Biden. He's been a tried and true Catholic for years. Yeah, you, practicing. So you don't you don't say anything about like that to a person's religion. You know, it, how would yeah. you know? Well, you no, know? but he he called him. And, and how dare Mike Pence, when the guy he is working for has yeah. probably never right. seen the inside of a church in years. You know? I and, just, I can't understand it. Yeah. I mean, uh, they have a great ad, the, uh, the uh, uh, Lincoln Project had an ad on the, I think it was yesterday. It was, it's called Adultery. And uh, it is uh, Pence doing his radio show, because he used to have a radio show, if you may remember, proving that anybody can have a radio show. Oh, yeah. uh, and and he, he was, they were talking about um, adultery, and he said how that was the biggest sin, and, you know, adultery was terrible. And they interspersed this with things of Trump and a list of all his wives and then all the women he cheated on with those wives, and then another wife, and then all the women he cheated on with uh, while he was married to that wife, and then the third one, both same thing. And all interspersed with Pence talking about how horrible adultery was. <laughs> what a bunch of hypocrites! You know, it's unbelievable. Uh, if Actually, this, huh? not because uh, if you engage in that, mm -hmm. Then all you have to do at the end of the night, before you go to bed, Father, please forgive me, for I have sinned. Please wash away my sins. And if you ask forgiveness, you are you're clear to go. Mm -hmm. Do you in think Trump? Do you think Trump has right? ever said a prayer in his life? <laughs> Probably not. I, I, I don't know. Well, I, Trump I, has been around Bibles a lot more than people think. Every hotel room and motel room has one. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Right. Uh -huh. uh, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the people in the crowd look really that. bored. They they don't look that excited. But yeah. Uh, by the way, somebody wrote here. Matt Crash wrote, "Feel free night." I imagine. Uh, you know, uh, he uh, he walked off the show last night, and I guess he's still having his hissy fit. So. <clears throat> And I'm, you know, it's, it's, free Friday it, it's fine with me. Everybody else can talk without the feeling of being interrupted, <clears throat> you know. Uh, it, it's uh, it's kind of nice. So. But how about that kid uh, with the, the automatic rifle shooting people up? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Now, now he's being glorified on uh, Fox News on yeah. Kennedy. Okay. And, uh, Why is he being a militia? Yeah. Well, Those, I got... Like, they're glorifying him. Uh, uh, Scott, uh, was it you, Kevin? Did you send me the thing about uh, the, of Colbert? Yeah, I sent I, it to you. Yeah, because I watched. Did you ever it. watch it? Yeah, I watched it. It was pretty good. Oh, was that and last night? And what he says is, it, didn't yeah. he? Was he the one that said that? Uh, if I seem to remember correctly, that these people who claim they're militia, they don't. They're not militias. They they, they don't helped. have the right to be a militia. No, but they but they but they helped. The police and the police were feeding them water. Water. They were yeah. throwing them water bottles and saying, "Thanks for your help." Yeah, yeah. And then when the guy shot, <clears throat> when the guy shot those three people, mm -hmm. after he shot them, he ran down the street with the gun over his shoulder and his hands in the air, going. And the people were going, "That's the shooter! That's the shooter!" And the cops drove right by oh, him. And they didn't even arrest him. He didn't they get didn't arrested. Didn't even arrest him. He went all the way back home. home. 
He went all the way back home, and they, they didn't arrest him. And, yeah. and they, he was part of the quote unquote militia helping him out. Well, they the can't called spell for, fucking militia. He sent. He sent a. Uh, they sent out a note on Facebook or something and asked for three thousand people to show up, and got three thousand RSVPs, and then called the police and said, "Please don't arrest us. We're going to help you." Mm-hmm. And did how many? Like, how many showed up? I don't know, but a lot. A lot did. And they were, you know, the, the cops were handing them water from a freaking... Uh, yeah, I saw that. Vehicle. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, thought he, I thought he put it pretty well last night. It was, a, it was, it kind of got me. Well, I'm weird. not a big fan of Colbert's, but... I'm not that, either, but, you know, I'm, pretty... I, am, I am a fan of Colbert, but I knew you weren't, but I thought he put it pretty well. Yeah, I did too. But, you know, I mean... Um, uh, the other night, I think Phil was saying, well, you know, that guy had a knife in his car, the guy they shot well, this, seven times yeah. in his back. And uh, since when is it illegal to have a knife in your car, number one? And number two, uh, how do you know that's what he was going for? You yeah, know? Who, who goes for a knife when the other person has a gun? Yeah. Well, and, then, a and, and, a and let's say the guy did have that. a knife. Everybody and let's say, let's say he was wielding that knife. <laughs> There were three cops there, and do you have to shoot him in the back seven times to stop seven him? Seven bullets in the back? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's One in the back of the knee would be fine if you're going to do it. I mean, a, 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 that'll any, drop him to the ground. A hand, any yeah. appendage. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, he got upset that he wasn't being listened to. Like, you know, you got to listen to me because I'm yeah, the authority. I'm and it's like, yeah. there are Too different bad. ways to handle that situation. Yeah. You yeah, know, but... Yeah, you get in that high adrenaline, you know, adrenaline state, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they training think is, something bad. That's what training is for, is to control that. Yeah. They could have yeah. shot the t the, uh, the tires in his car and said, no, you ain't going anywhere, fucker. So, yeah, you know. but, yeah. yeah, but his kids were in there. He's not going to do something like that stupid. Well, also, but, yeah, are you going to start shooting a gun at a guy with it. his kids in the car? Yeah. I mean, there are other ways to handle this kind of situation. Got a billy club. So I, I don't know if you guys heard uh, Andrew Yang, his his father, that guy's father, Blake's father, reached out to Andrew Yang. I don't know why, but and he talked yeah. to him. And he said the first thing he'd said when he when he woke up from from his curtain state was, uh, "Why did they shoot me five times?" Well, he he only heard five, and then I guess he blacked out. But he said, "Why did they have to shoot me five times?" Yeah. Also, even he was like, "Why, you know, I well, have to do that?" Listen, this guy could be the could have been the worst kind of person ever, and I, for the, the people who talk about him, say he wasn't. Okay, uh, but he could be the worst kind of person ever, and still, you hand they that would be handling it all wrong. Okay, doesn't deserve that. Kind of yeah, yeah, you know, um, you 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 do what you have to do to restrain somebody. And not put yourself in danger, okay? That does not include shooting your gun seven times in somebody's back. And you see a picture of the cop who did it? He's like this kid, you know. He doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, I think Kenosha is going to lose a terribly high lawsuit on that one. Yep. You know, I think... Um, uh, the man who got shot certainly can look forward to a lifetime of if he can't walk, at least he can have somebody walk for him uh, full time. Uh, he's going to he's going to get a lot of money out of that. They have him handcuffed. They also said they have him handcuffed to the in bed. The hospital, yeah. yeah. In the hospital. Yeah. They, well, his dad's a chain, but he's handcuffed to yeah. the bed and he can't yeah. walk. Yeah. He's yeah. paralyzed. Oh, and... <laughs> Now, they here, do training. Those, here, those are the rules. So they follow them then, but then when they apprehend them, they don't follow yeah, anything. Here was the story of the day. Jeez. Here was the story of the day. Uh, and, and Cuomo did a teleconference. He didn't do a video. He did a, a, a spoken thing on the phone. And he talked about he's been railing after the CDC for this whole notion that if you come into contact with somebody who has COVID, uh, unless you've got symptoms, don't get yourself tested. Right. The CDC suddenly said that. Uh, yep. It's amazing how we well, said it because, it because it's part of Trump's move to lower the amount of testing so that there will be not as many cases of COVID. Anyway, uh, Dr. Fauci, 
it was it said he it was not. They said Doctor. They said Doctor Fauci was in on this decision, mm -hmm. and Fauci today came out and said, "I wasn't in on that decision. I couldn't have been. I was in the hospital being operated on, and I was under general anesthesia." And his vocal cords, no less. Yeah, on his yeah, vocal cords, right. no less. Right. Oh he was God. on general anesthesia. He was on a general anesthesia. Yeah. He said, "There's no way I could have approved this, and I wouldn't have if I was there." He said, "But they're going around saying, and Dr. Fauci agrees with us." I mean, okay, come on. That, that goes along with this this thing that they're talking right now. They're uh, following CDC guidelines. Mm -hmm. which obviously is everybody sits two feet apart and doesn't wear masks mm -hmm. yeah. in yeah. the White House, and everybody gets, you know, it's a 2,000-person gathering now, not 10 or 15 people. That's okay. Th yeah, this is... Must uh, be the new CDC guidelines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I'm hoping... I, yeah, I don't pray for anybody to get sick. I don't hope that anybody gets sick. Yeah, I, I but said the same if thing anybody about life, but I if anybody sick. deserves to get sick, it's those people who were there tonight. Yeah, who did not practice social distancing. You know, mm -hmm. if you can't, here's the rule: if you can't be socially distanced, which they weren't, then you wear a mask. That's it, <clears throat> plain and simple. Very simple thing you do. I saw two. Did you two masks? I saw Sorry. two masks. Wow. And they said they weren't testing everybody that went in there either. Yeah. They said they were going to test everybody, but they did not. Hmm. I didn't even hear that they said they were going to. They said they weren't necessarily going to test everybody. You know, you... you, you stupid is as stupid does. You, you, yeah. you, you, you govern by example, you know, and, and you legislate by example, and you show people... Uh, how how they should be acting by example, yep. and and this guy has, he, and now he's he's just telling they're telling outright lies to try and bolster him as to being something that he isn't, and I don't know who's going to buy this crap. Uh, I mean, if if if, if anything, people are going to look at this right now and see him talking in front of a group of two thousand people sitting side by side with no mask. And these no maskers out here in the country are going to go, fuck it, look what he's doing. And it's just going to cause more shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, set an example. You just did. Mm -hmm. did have you watched any of this out there in Kuala Lumpur, uh, uh, Bree? Yeah. And what's your, like, what's, yeah. Your, what's your takeaway? Looks like the end of the world. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's scary. Over there, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I just, uh, I have a lot of different thoughts about it all the time. And, um, but, you know, one of the things is that uh, in every profession that you can name, even in, you know, I can think in my own, there are bad apples. There are people who don't follow their training or weren't trained or didn't pay attention. And uh, we do have a process that, you know, this, uh, this person will, uh, face justice and there will be consequences and uh, one thing I don't like to see is you know I, I totally agree with protests I don't like to see violent protests mm -hmm. at the same time I understand why they do it and as long as no other person is hurt uh, then I'm okay with that if they, even if they damage property I'm not as uh, you know big it, it, that's okay to me it's, it's humans that are more important but uh, I'd like to see, you know, more peaceful uh, protests, uh, you know, being called forth a, a, as a result of this. Otherwise, it just looks like the U.S. is uh, on fire, you know. Um, um, have you heard about Lindsey Graham? He's, he might lose. He, he's up for re-election in South Carolina this year, and uh, he's, he's not looking great for Lindsey Graham. But uh, he came out and he said... He called the QAnon conspiracy theory that has been spread by some Republican congressional candidates as, in his words, batshit crazy. <laughs> but not untrue. Crazy, yeah. crazy yeah. stuff inspiring people to violence. I think the platform that plays off people's fears that compels them to do things they normally wouldn't do 
and it's very much a threat. Wait a minute. Doesn't Giuliani have the trademark on batshit crazy? I'm pretty sure he does. No, no, no. He has the franchise. <laughs> okay. He has the franchise. But doing like three tequila shots in a row, some might consider batshit crazy, but they still do it. Yeah, well, bat, bat <laughs> but he didn't bat, say it wasn't true. Batshit crazy is a state of being, uh, uh, but he has, the, he has the franchise on batshit crazy. <laughs> By the way, where is old Rudy? <laughs> Well, yeah, Rudy is 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 missing in action. I hear yeah. from what I've been able to ascertain, he still is in contact with Trump, and they still talk, and he still advises him, but he's kind of laying low and not saying anything because I think it wasn't, especially in election year, wouldn't play too well. He was there tonight. <laughs> yeah, he was on the thing. Was tonight. he? Yeah. But was he yeah. really? How often does Giuliani sit back and think to himself, "I couldn't be president, but this guy could be president." <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that too. Yeah. yeah. Still have parsley in his teeth. Well, he's a pro he's a prostate cancer survivor. Uh, well, the dipshit's done. Now they're doing the fireworks. Mm. Fireworks? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Let me turn this on here. I can... Or what? A new a new town under fire? Let me let me look at it here. Or under flood? Floods and fireworks fires. Fireworks behind the monument. Huh? Fireworks behind the Washington Let's Monument. See here, they should have uh, two other screens: one with Wisconsin on fire, and the other with uh, Louisiana underwater. Yeah, yeah. that would uh, be. Appropriate. And now everybody's standing up and uh, they're applauding, of course. And uh, there's Fatso. Man, he is he is turning into a lumbering piece of crap, isn't he? Um, I'm surprised he's still alive, to be honest with you. That's not a healthy-looking human being, folks. No. Um, he probably wouldn't even live through another four years. Yeah, and there we go with the fireworks. Boy. Oh, and they're using the Washington Monument. See see what I'm saying? Yeah. We're using, yeah. we're using Washington, D.C. as a prop for they the used convention. The whole, the whole thing oh. was a prop. The whole thing was a produced prop. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. He had two people, I mean, you know, who's producing it, two people who did The Apprentice. Yep. yep. Not, not Mark Burnett, but, uh, you know, line producers and things like that. And one of the people produced his beauty pageant as well. So, you know. It was, uh, I thought it was pretty shittily produced, too. Um, I'm, uh, I'm expecting another check with Trump's signature on it right before the election. The stimulus checks are going to come. Yeah. 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 Watch it. Yeah, they'll do that. The vote for me check. Yeah. Yep. Um, so my question is this. Let's say he wins. Where do we go from there? What happens to this country in the next four years? Canada. Oh, wait, four wait, 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 Robert? Canada. Is that the easy way out? And they might not let us in. You know, they're being very careful about letting Americans in Canada right now. Malaysia? <laughs> I might join you, Jeffrey. Is, is Malaysia okay as a democracy <laughs> these days, or is it uh, still kind of iffy? We're okay. Is that is, you saying is that a democracy these days? Are you saying that because somebody might be listening in? <laughs> no, you know, I, I guess you just kind of get used to it after a while. So, Americans, you just have to get used to, you know, Trump. That. This is the way it is. He says a lot of things more than he does a lot of things. That's, you know, what you have to kind of get your, you know, head around. He's, you know, the, the president is, is somewhat of a figurehead. And, you know, there's apparatus and, uh, around him. And so, you know, in other countries, it's the same way. You know, it, it comes and goes. Now America is the same. But if he thinks he can do anything he wants now, mm. what's it going to yeah. be like if he wins? Yep. I mean, exactly. it, it, he he's going to be very, very egotistical about all this. He's going to, he's going to write executive orders on yep. women's yep. butts. You know, I mean, yep. he's he's yep. he's going to go crazy. Going to become posted. Well, but we'll if he doesn't, four if, years things to talk about. If he doesn't win, I think he's going to go crazy too. You know, yeah. I'm worried about. And he'll delegitimize. I'm a, he I'm worried again. Well, I'm worried about him losing and then the, there's a period of two and a half months between losing 
and the inauguration. And in that time, how much damage could he do to this country in two and a half months? Yep. Just to get even. Yeah. And then there's the other question that people have are, will he, will he even leave the White House? So, Tony? Oh, he'll leave the White House. He thinks it's a dump anyway. Yeah. Tony, you've been quiet. Mm. What do you think? Uh, on which which On question? all of it. Uh, have you watched any of the convention? Yeah, I've, I've watched it. I think if he wins, let's say he does win. Let's say he pulls this out. It's a long way till election. You know what? We survived. We'll survive as a country. I mean, we saw we survived Bush, and I think Bush those eight years were really horrible. Well, they were horrible, but I I think this guy has done a lot of permanent damage. It's going to last with us yeah. for the next thirty years. Look, that look but, on his face, man! It's just a scrawl. I mean, no matter how how nice and wonderful um, um, Biden would try to be to the rest of the world, it's going to take him a long time to ever trust us again. You That's know, a good point because too. their attitude is going to be, you know, we're only as safe from the United States as the guy who's in office. You know, and and, uh, the, you know, here here's a case in which uh, this is a pretty terrible guy, you know, and, you and know, they hate I, him. Hmm? You know what I think, Alex, what, what I'm taking out of this, like I'm listening to little tidbits. Yeah. As a whole. Like when I heard Nancy Pelosi say in passing, I think somebody asked her a question. Oh, about is that him. mob like right now? Well, I wouldn't oh, debate him. God. Now, that's not the right thing to say. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What are you talking about? Uh, Nancy Pelosi no, said. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about Kevin. He's looking. They got, they got the whole Trump family up there and some opera singer singing something. It looks like the mob, no doubt. <laughs> wow. Uh, do you think they that. could buy a few fireworks? You're just, you're just waiting for the Tommy gun to open up. Look at that. <laughs> Look at them. Look at them. Look at that. Look at that fat Gilfoyle woman uh, with a <clears throat> shit eating grin and Donald Trump Jr. And Marla Maple's daughter showed up for the Oh, yeah, the that was the fest. And then you got, of Look course, you, shit. he's got a lot of children. You know, you've got Ivanka <laughs> and you've got. Uh, all the, a lot, most of that came out of his sperm. It's uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, and uh, good lord, yeah. that is just like scary shit right there. It yeah. is. Yes, yeah. and you know, just using using our histor- national monuments, and if if Obama had done that, they would have gone batshit crazy, as Lindsey Graham said. Just like we are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, the difference between Bush and uh, Trump is that Bush was was incompetent, but he wasn't vindictive and vicious. Trump is vindictive and vicious. Well, I think all- he will start like locking people up, like Biden and Hillary, and uh, if he gets reelected, he'll I think come that, up with some excuse yeah, to do it. I, I think the difference also between uh, Bush and 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 Trump uh, is uh, that Bush respected the job. He respected yeah. the position. He respected the presidency. He honored the presidency. He may not have been the president we liked or wanted, uh, but uh, and he had some pretty evil people pulling the puppet strings. But the fact of the matter is that he respected the presidency, and I think that's what the problem is here. Uh, there is no respect for the presidency. Jeff, you, you, know, you've been quiet tonight, Jeff. Well, I, I think uh, Bush was... Uh, at, at the beginning, pretty crappy. But I think by the second time, he was trying to change his attitude a little bit. Don't you think? I think he felt true? a little more confident in the job. I think yeah. he felt that he didn't need to listen to people uh, around him as much as he did the first time around. Yeah, but after Katrina and then the whole bank financial collapse, he just gave up. <laughs> he was like, fuck this. You know? Well, you know, I mean, what we need, right, you know, what you always need in a president is somebody when a crisis comes along can take care of it. Now, we didn't, we imagined all kinds of crises that could happen under under yeah. a Trump. We didn't count on a, on a pandemic, mm-hmm. okay? And this pandemic truly would test anybody. Uh, yeah. And, uh, it, you know, it tested our governor here in New York, and he, t- well, they're, they're, 
Oh, there it went. There we oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> if this one, if, if this thing has the clapper on it, John, why can't you just clap to get it to go on? Because it doesn't always recognize it. I don't know. I got to <laughs> go right up to it and go like that. Oh boy, doesn't it's recognize up. the clap. I see. I know. Okay. You know what I wish though, Alex? What? I was going to tell you. Mm. I kind of wish, and I don't want to sound like an ageist. I wish the Democrats would have ran somebody younger. Well, yes, but no. Uh, who? I don't know. I mean, maybe Buttigieg. I thought he would have been good. Well, yeah, but, you know, Buttigieg, I think, will I, be a contender later on down the line. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think the, the Repul I mean, the Democrats, they just said, you know what, we don't want to take any chances. Let's just go with the safe bet with Biden, you know. Well, I, 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 over I was worried about Let's Biden. Let's do what we did in 2016. Yeah, well, I was worried about Biden on the, in, and the way in which he would be perceived. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and 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 whether he would be up to the task, and I think he's done a really nice job of it. When he gives a speech, yeah. he looks strong, he looks positive. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm I'm very happy with what I'm seeing. You know, I don't know that he's going to be able to do a good job. I hope he can. You know, but you he know he but he's doing he's he's speaking yeah. well and he's presenting himself well. He seems. Wait, 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 hold on, first Jeff and then Tony. I think, you know, the guy walks around like he's alive. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, you know, yeah, he's an older guy and all of that, but he looks in pretty damn good shape, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but and, Trump, and mentally, Trump, tr Trump tries to better shape than Trump. Well, know? Trump yeah. tries to uh, pawn him off as being sick and uh, addled and all of yeah. that and. Come on, you know, if I were to say who looks healthier, Biden or Trump, I'd have to Trump give it to Biden. Just around eating fucking yeah. But the only thing that's right, chicken and coke all day. See, the reason why I was thinking Biden, Alex, into the group is that I can already see Trump's team in the debate. He's going to throw NAFTA on the table, and he's going to throw the war in Iraq vote. And he can't refute that. So if you put Buttigieg in, he would have been clean on that. Well, you know, uh, uh, the best way you fight arguments like that, and I'm sure Biden knows how to do it, is okay, that you is that you take the, the 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 bite of the question out of the question by walking directly into it and saying, "Hey, that was then. This is now. We all make mistakes. We are all not perfect. I think that going back, I probably would have changed my vote." Trump but, doesn't make mistakes. But, but you know, but what we have now is a president who doesn't make mistakes, won't admit to making mistakes, and won't listen to anybody who would tell him that he's making a mistake. Mm. And, and um, what you want in office is someone who, yeah, he might be vulnerable, but he's willing to realize that he doesn't have all the answers. And that's Trump how you wrote, walk into it, you know. Tr Trump wrote in his book that he was for the Iraq war anyway. So we've got, you know, even if he lies about yeah. it now, you know. He well, really he, it, he it. says it, he says everything all the time, and then he cherry picks what he needs when he needs it. Yeah. yeah. Robert? I feel like I ask this question every night. Does anybody here know anyone who's still on the fence? No, there is nobody. Really think that the base I'm on the fence. Gonna make a bit of difference? Wait a minute, you're on, on the fence. Wait a minute, you're on the fence, Bree? Yeah, I'm on the fence. You, what, you, you might you're actually, if you were... You, you would might... actually vote for Trump? <laughs> well, uh, no, I, I'm thinking of voting for a third party. No, well, wait a minute, that, uh, then that doesn't put you on the fence. That, uh, yeah. the, on the fence is either... I could vote either... for Trump under one condition. What's mm -hmm. that? Uh, it... How big is that stimulus check? <laughs> so, so what we're saying is you can be bought. Because Alex, you said you were waiting for two thousand. I'll hold out two thousand. Maybe I'll vote for him. You know, it doesn't <laughs> matter who I who I vote for in New York. The Democrats going to win. You know, so. Um, My yeah. vote's in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Whose vote counts here? Yeah, in Pennsylvania. Now, yeah. You still That's vote. Right? You still can vote in America, right, uh, Bree? Yeah. What do you sure. do? Absentee. Yeah. Yeah. Have so you gotten? Charlie's your, got it, the most valuable vote out of all of us. Exactly. Yeah. Who's got the most valuable vote? Charlie. He's in Charlie. Texas. Charlie. Oh, he's yeah. in Texas. Yes. 
How does it look in Texas, Charlie? It's neck close. and neck. It, it yeah. is neck and They're neck. Tied. Yeah. It is. It's tied. Wow. That shouldn't even be. Which you know. it shouldn't. Uh, Who is Jerry Falwell uh, picking this time around? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he, 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 the crucifix in the bedroom. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know. Miss, uh, Miss Georgia? Even, I don't know. You know, there's got to be an... Arizona's gotta, uh, on, on the, uh, on the you know... On the cusp. Either way. Chopping block. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yep. That's, that's been a red state since, like, the <laughs> 1920s. Yeah. Well, I mean, if 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 the uh, if the uh, if we could t if the Democrats could take the Senate and the and the and the Congress, House of Representatives, um, and the presidency will be up. Uh, will be have a big smile on our face. However, for years I often said I like it when there's a you know there's a difference of opinion between the White House and the and the Congress, and yet it's not serving its function now. Everybody's no. taking these very polar opposite views, and nobody's going across the aisle. To, to change their opinion. Before you had those those, uh, you had uh, what we call liberal liberal Republicans. Like uh, McCain was a liberal Republican, who could be counted uh, couldn't be counted on to necessarily vote with the Republicans or vote conservative because he wasn't a conservative really. And and uh, so when the, the, we had uh, everything back in those days like that, I I liked a nice kind of equal balance between Republicans and Democrats and power and so on. So that what we did in this country became a very interesting debate and where people would come together and compromise and make cobble together ideas. But we don't do that anymore. That's not the nature of our politics any longer. You're either a Republican and you vote that, you know, you love Trump. Now, if I were a Republican and I was a mm -hmm. true Republican and mm -hmm. I was a conservative, how am I going to love Trump? You probably hate his guts. But you know, yet they do. Well, that's because you got to pick Coke or Sprite at McDonald's. You know, it's the <laughs> same thing. So they're going in there. It's well, like that's the choice you got. There's always water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the Green Party. That's the Green Party is the water. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just, I, I don't understand it, to be honest with you. I, you know, I mean... Uh, the, uh, if we had a good, healthy, healthy government right now, it would be people who work with each other to try and come up with solutions to problems. And, Chris and Matthews. We're, well, I think our system, I, I've said it time and time again, I hate to be a broken record, our system has failed us. It doesn't work for what we need right now. Yeah. And the flaws are extremely evident. Yeah, but it, all we I need to do is to time. say, I'm here to work in the best interest of the American people. But that doesn't seem to be what they're doing. You know, it's all a big ego trip. Yes, Robert. I was just going to say, Chris Matthews wrote an entire book on Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill and mm -hmm. how they really couldn't stand one another. But yet, when push came to shove, they always got in the Oval Office, closed the door, and said, we're not leaving until we get this hammered out. It was called a something. And who uh, gave a little, who yeah. gave a little, and before you know it, at least you had action. It, wasn't it called a Something of Rivals? What was the name of the no, book? No, Team of Rivals Team of is Rivals? the book by Doris Kearns Goodwin oh, okay. about uh, Lincoln. Oh, and okay. the fact that Lincoln always believed that he never put anyone in his cabinet that would likely agree with him. He felt that if you agree with me, why do I need you? Yeah. A that's a very good that's a very yeah. good I, I, idea you know i no, mean that's what i let, that was an answer that biden yeah. gave to something in which he said uh, oh no obama was saying it about biden that when he was a uh, president the last person in the room after everybody had given their opinion was joe biden and when he would decide on a decision it was joe biden who would either say good idea or here's where you're wrong and I would listen to him. I would listen you know, to hear what he said because I wanted somebody who didn't necessarily disagree with every decision I made. Yeah, you need a contrarian voice. Um, and if everyone is scared, then you need to appoint someone. Yeah. And you say, uh, you're going to be the contrarian this month, you know, and it's your job to, you know, be the devil's advocate. So I always do that in my meetings because I am worried that there might be people who somehow feel 
fearful to speak up or to say something because something negative might happen to them. So, yeah. you know, the, the one thing though is also, also though, sometimes you have people who become known for that. They mm -hmm. always object. They're always contrarian. And that's, that's not helpful as well. So you need someone who is really thinking about it, you know, and, and giving you their, their honest opinion. Well, and yeah, it, yeah, you, yeah. you actually you actually foster a buy-in, you know, from people who would ordinarily disagree with you if you're a manager of some kind. You know what I mean? Like you're incorporating the person who would ordinarily be your rival. In effect, now because right. you've listened to him, he's bought in to what it is that you're trying to accomplish together. Right. Yep. So it it, it has you do that all the time. Tony. Tony. You know what I think can make the system better in my opinion. I was thinking about it first. You need to lift, you got to get rid of these term limits. They can't have jobs for life. And I really think the only way you can actually get progress in Congress, okay, you need to get rid of these two parties. They should be merged, all separate candidates, all people separate working. And then if a Democrat or Republican... You that, still have that's not the way this whole this whole thing's been set up from the get-go. I mean, the beginning, like, you know in the beginning... In the beginning... They, monopolies. They, should, they have a monopoly in Congress. Because they can't get shit done because they're all walking in line. Jeff had his hand up. Jeff? Uh, it, well, your mic isn't on, Jeff. Hmm? I'm sorry. There you go. Uh, I'm on. I would don't recommend reducing the number of congressmen, the, the, the number of senators. It's just too many. I, I often wonder why is it that senators get six years and congressmen only get two? Because... In most cases, the people who are really representing local constituents are the are the are the people in the Congress, are in the House of Representatives, right. and are congressmen. Yeah, two is too short. You, yeah, and yeah. and what happens when you make it two years? Every two years, they're running again, so they're constantly yeah. campaigning, constantly campaigning, constantly yeah. having to go into the offices of the RNC or the DNC and make phone calls to raise money for the party because they're required to do that. Make yeah. it four years for senator, four years for congressman, goodbye. You know? Do that or make it six for both and goodbye and you never get to run again. Yeah, I, I, something like that where, you know, or you move into a different facet of the system. I mean, uh, yeah, two years is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I never could understand that one. And it's got to be hell for somebody. Yes, quickly, Jeff. A lot of times I've been on a board Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and being a board member. And you only had like uh, five, no, three times, three years, and then you're out, regardless of what your performance was. Mm -hmm. They always wanted to change the people. Well, I mean, it, it just should be that, uh, I mean, it, it, your Congress people are your most important because they're the people who represent the local communities and try to get the pork to bring it back to give you jobs and give money into your economy and so on. And I just find that uh, them having only two years, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's just but you ridiculous. should still stagger the election so that you never at any point have a brand new Congress where right. all of them don't know shit from Shinola. Right. You know, like every two years, another group is out for six years yeah, or something. Exactly, like exactly. You don't want a fresh maiden Congress. Yeah. Hey, this has been a great evening. This, uh, yeah. I, I love just these civil conversations that we have here. Uh, and, um, well, we're through with the Republican convention. Now it's on to what? Debates? The 20 and, and Trump, by the way, wants Biden to take a, uh, a COVID test before he will speak really? to him in a closed room. Yeah. Which makes me ask the question, then why do you feel we all don't have to don't take get, tests? I mean, yeah. none of this... It's ridiculous. Anyway, thank you to Charlie. Always good to have you here. Uh, thank you to uh, uh, to Robert. Gr nice having you here. Jeff, thank you. Thank you to uh, um, our uh, uh, John Larkin. Uh, thank you to Tony. Thank you, Brian. Oh, you've been quiet tonight, Brian. <laughs> some nights you, you, you aren't, and some nights you aren't. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. And, of course, Bray out there in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, it looks like you're next door. Uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave, big wave goodbye back, okay? There you go. There they go, folks. Yeah. 
Wait a minute, what? I pressed the wrong button? Yeah, I do everything. I, I, just ridiculous, okay? Uh, I pushed a button and I put, it didn't go, and I pushed another button and it was the wrong button, and well, who knows? I'm getting too old for this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting too old for this. Hey, listen, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. I'll be back tomorrow night right here. 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, please tell her I love her. And everybody, be safe out there and be sure you wear a mask. Good night, everybody.